Welcome back, everyone. I'm Sabrina Fair, and this is Architecture. Today, we will be covering a much different style than last time, Cape Cod. Compared to the previous episode, which was on French Renaissance, in case you've forgotten, Cape Cod is a quite simple and much smaller building style. Before we begin, I just want to say that if you all do enjoy this episode, please make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. It really helps me out a lot, and it's free, so consider checking it out. Alright, let's begin. The Cape Cod style originated during the 17th century in New England, as the name Cape Cod indicates. The original houses were built by the Puritans, and they were constructed of simple local materials for the purpose of avoiding the cod's vicious storms. Today, the Cape Cod is a one to one and a half story house made of wooden shingles and framed with shutters. Originally, these shutters would be used to hold back heavy winds, but are now often screwed into the side of the house and thus made unusable. I personally believe that is quite a shame, but that's life. Cape Cods feature one large centralized chimney to keep the entire house warm. As far as the roof goes, it is steep to allow piled up snow to slide off instead of building up and potentially destroying the house. This is particularly important in locations that relieve a lot, receive a lot of snow. While such a steep roof lo usually looks out of proportion in a Minecraft build, it works very well when broken up with these two dormers. In real life, dormers would increase ventilation, space, and light. As I have said, the original Cape Cod homes were constructed by the Puritans. The style was revitalized, however, during the 1930s through the 50s and eventually became the quote-unquote poster house for the so-called American dream. They recognized this from old advertisements where a lovely vintage family is smiling in front of their nice new home with a nice new car and a nice new white picket fence in the nice new suburbs with a nice new job. <laughs> it is pr practically this house that we have built today. All right, now that the exterior is finished, let's go ahead and pop in game to talk about our palette and then the interior. As you all can see, I chose to go with stripped warped stems for this build. And the reason for that is that most of the Cape Cod houses that you can see today are made in some sort of blue. While there are other varieties of blue, such as the blue concrete or some of the terracottas, I like the uh, the stripped wood because it has that shuttered look that is very important for a Cape Cod. If you do wish to do another color, I would say that the crimson version works very well too. It would be more magenta. The birch would be great, especially if you are just beginning a game. It has a almost a beachy look if you would build it in game. Uh, sort of like you're at the boardwalk and you see one of these small beach houses. Another option would be clay, which does not have the sh shuttered look, but it is a very nice warm color, not too difficult to obtain in game, unlike the, uh, the blue and the red woods, which can be hard to find in the nether. So really you can choose whatever you want, but I think those three or four might be the best options. I'm sure you all saw when we were doing this that this back is, it's quite flat. There's nothing back here. I would also recommend if you want to expand this house, you could have a, a patio of some sort, a, a built-in fence off area. I'm not sure exactly, but it could be really pretty garden party sort of area, like a fireplace and chairs and a dining table, whatever you want to do. As for the interior, you can see I have almost cordoned off this house into two sections. I have a bedroom or a sitting area over here, and over here I have a sort of, a sort of kitchen and storage room. You can put whatever you want in your chests, and these fireplaces are really great. They can either look like a pantry, and you could pretend 
you have food in them, you could put item frames to label what would be there, or you could even, you could even cook some food on them, which I think is really nice touch. And when you're done, you just extinguish it. Come on, just extinguish it, pick up your meat, and you are good to go. As for the upper areas with the dormers, you could do something like inside, but there's not an easy way to get up here. I'm sure some of you more redstone savvy people could figure it out, but not me. <laughs> Over here I just put some old armor sets and an ender chest, and you could put some barrels here, not chests, because they're, they're not going to be able to open. Brewing stand too. Case for all of your brewing needs. I like to call this like the workshop. Put whatever you need up here that you don't want your guests to see. And I'm sure you all were wondering what I what I was talking about when I said that these houses should have shutters. How was I incorporating that in my own build? Well, I kind of there's no not an easy way to incorporate shutters. For example, if you use trap doors, any color, you could use the warped. It's not gonna look quite right. It doesn't look it doesn't look quite right with with nothing. The colors just they don't stand out. See, if I had just put them on top of that, you wouldn't have ever seen them. What I decided to do instead was to use quartz blocks and to frame the windows even if it didn't quite look like shutters. And I will say this front porch is very nice for such a situation as this rain, which you can, your guests can stand out of it, you can look out, and you can have a nice driveway coming out, make it like a very nice park, maybe a circular driveway and a little fountain in the center. I think that would be very nice. For this build, I decided to go with the white glass, if you all can see. It's kind of hard to in the rain, but you can see that I chose white glass because I really wanted to bring out the, the clean lines that I had established with the quartz blocks. So I think that really accentuates it and has a bright pop of color, whereas the warped stems can become a little... They think I'm a little dark if you don't have anything bright enough. Same thing with these lanterns of both varieties and the prismarine blocks. They add a fun touch of color to the build. Now, keep in mind, you can do this house, you can redo this house however you want. You don't have to section your house off into two parts. You don't have to use this color roof or these blocks that I have suggested. You could use the normal fireplace here. You don't have to use trapdoors. There are so many things you can do and it would look really great if you had different block varieties of this house with slight variations. As I said, different colors of fireplaces or no trapdoors, whatever you want. You could use any of the aforementioned suggestive block, suggestion block. You can use any of the blocks that I have suggested or whatever you want. It's really up to you. My job is just to provide some sort of idea of the shape and the history of these architectural styles. So you do what you want and I would love to see your builds. So you can message them to me on Twitter. I am at Sabrina Fair MC. But until then, have a great day and don't forget to keep on building. Remember, it's practice that makes perfect. Bye everyone. <laughs>